Hey guys, Phil Hoken from Reverse Aru here. Uh, just taking another video for an update. Uh, we had heaps of questions come through from the last video update, which is great. People asking about the Synchro Kit, which um, we'll offer as part of the RGB kit. So I'll go over this cover plate in this update. I'll let you know how the Synchro Kit actually uh, is intended to work. Uh, people were asking about uh, case thicknesses and material and also uh, drain holes and filler holes and breather holes and how we're going to seal them to the actual unit, how, how we're going to seal the two case halves. And another question was uh, about which transmissions that the RGBs can adapt to and uh, bolt to. So I'll go over some of those questions and uh, yeah, I'll get to it. Another question we had was uh, to do with rotating the case uh, or the portal for lifted vans and the reason you'd want to do that is if you have a look at the output here um, just say you've got a lifted van and the cv angle is like this because this is the wheel out here cv angle would be like that it's steep um, if you turn this and rotate it down then it would bring this down and then obviously the cv shaft has a better alignment to the drive so that's the reason you'd want to do it but the, to answer the question the guy uh, who asked uh, would we be having any other supports apart from just the bolts? The answer is yes. On this, we've just got uh, the six bolts either side and we'll test that. Um, but we've already decided that on the back of this bracket, we'll have either serrated lines um, on this side and also serrated lines on the, on the case as well. So that way, as you turn and then click it back in, um, it gives more grip. Uh, or the other thing we've thought is, of is to have either a dowel in the bracket or a dowel in the case with a hole in the opposite side so then if it's doweled you'd probably have maybe four or five eight mil dowels so that as you take it off or you take the case off but you take the case off turn and then back on so there'd there'd be set positions that way so i'd love to hear what your thoughts are in the comments if you'd rather see dowels and we give you sort of four or five set positions or if you'd rather splined lines so that you can adjust them to you know do, um, closer degrees together rather than being such big jumps okay so i received a fair few questions about the synchro kit uh, which is great and uh, probably shows that i could have gone into a little bit more depth in that in the last update but that's fine i didn't want to make the video too long so i sort of cut it short but yeah so this is the uh, 3d printed but this is basically going to be the cover plate that we make there will be some changes made you can see that there's a really deep uh, borehole there that's for a double row angular contact bearing so there's a lot of support at the end there um, this will take a seal 50 mil od 35 mil id seal which is the same as the um, stub axles on the front differential of a subaru 5mt so that's nice and easy um, and yeah so what i'll do is i'll just take this extension housing off to show you in behind here and when you take extension housing off, you'll see there's a set of transfer gears. Now the transfer gears, I won't use the words clockwise or anti-clockwise because whether you look at it from this angle or that angle, it will change. So I'll just say, in its current form, in a standard application of a Subaru transmission, the center differential spins this way, all right? So if that's spinning that way, you can see the top shaft spins the opposite direction. Now, if we were to use this output for a genuine VW Synchro, I don't know if you can see that there, but it's actually spinning, uh, that way it is, it's actually spinning the incorrect direction when you do that, because this shaft is going this rotation, where the VW Synchro needs an output that goes this rotation. So, all that to say, again, that's the way it would be spinning from a Subaru, I don't know if you can see that, that's why I'm sort of pausing. That's the way it would go for a Subaru. So if we discard that shaft, and we discard this housing, uh, in the kit will be a shaft, the same spline as this, and the same uh, OD here to slip in the inner bearing there. And then our shaft will stick out from the center differential. It'll stick straight out direct from the center differential, so there's no transfer gear at the top anymore. Our shaft will come straight out of the center differential through our housing, and then it will automatically be turning the correct direction for the synchro 
front differential and drive shaft. So hopefully that explains enough, uh, yeah, how it's all going to work, why you can't use the standard um, output and why we have to have our own shaft coming out of the bottom. So that's, uh, that's for the synchro. Now for the two wheel drive application, this plate here comes as part of the two wheel drive kit. Um, what you'll do is take the rear extension housing off. You can sell out on eBay. Um, take the center differential out, which will look like this. You take that out, again, sell it on eBay. You don't need that if you have a two wheel drive application. Then you'll see in here, there's two splines. So they go onto the back of the deep pinion shaft. And then once you take the, this center differential case off, there'll be two splines there you lock. And then you can put this case back on, minus the differential, minus the extension housing. You don't need those. And then you just bolt this case or cover over the top like that. And that's the two wheel drive application. Okay, so in, in regards to the questions about the uh, two case halves, and there was questions about the thickness, there was questions about material, there was questions about the, diff fill, uh, the, sorry, the filler plug and the breather and things like that. Uh, we had this case made, it's out of polycarbonate, which is technically bulletproof glass. Um, we believe that it'll be strong enough at least to test. Uh, we won't flog the, you know, flog the butt off it with this case attached. But at the same time, we do believe it's going to stand up to a fair bit of pressure. It's, it's hard to see because it's clear, but that, that floor, the floor of the case half there down to the, the bottom bit borehole for the bearing is, as you can see, it's upside down, but it is 35 millimetres deep. So that's actually quite thick. And then there's another 24 millimetres at the top here. So it's a, quite a thick case. Um, this is going to be made out of 6061 aluminium or aluminium, <laughs> as the Americans would call it. Uh, so they're going to be quite strong. So you can see the threads, the different holes here. Uh, so we've got one that is, that's actually upside down. So we've got one here, that thread there, if you can see it, that's the drain hole. Then you've got another thread here, that's the breather. At the moment, we'll just run a barb. And then, especially for the guys with the synchro, they'll probably want the breather up high so they can run a tube to the barb and then run the, the tube as high as they want in case they cross water or anything like that. Um, and then the filler, plug is here. So you can see um, the filler plug, if, if the level's there, it's going to be running sort of straight across the top there. So as you can see, this case is going to do us wonders. It, it'll really help. Um, these angles help. This wasn't planned. It was just lucky that the angles that we've cut on the side of the design actually magnify, um, you probably can't see from the video, but they magnify the teeth. So once we get um, driving, we'll be able to check the teeth and you can actually see the backlash on that flat part. Hopefully you can in the video, you can see the backlash, which is set at 0 0.1 of a millimeter at the moment. Um, we probably could bring it down to 0 0.08 or even 0 0.06 millimeter uh, backlash gap. But at the moment we started at 0 0.1, which we think will be okay for now. And we'll test it and see. So the beauty of having, um, the beauty of having so many, well, when I say so many, two, two uh, RGB cases per transmission is it means you can do a lot of split testing. So in this side, we could actually run 75, 90 grade uh, oil. And then in the other side, we could be running 80, 90 or, you know, 90, 140, or, you know, we could choose what we want to do there. So because we've got three test vehicles, that means we can split test six different oils if we like. That means we can test um, a few different bearings, like I've mentioned in the other update. This is a 5307, which is quite thick. We could test that one there. And then on the other side, we could test the 5207 on the other side. Um, so there is a massive advantage of having two boxes in the testing phase is a huge advantage um, having two boxes because of all the split testing. So one of the other questions was, how do we seal it? Um, I wanted to steer clear of the what we call gasket goo here in Australia, um, the sealant, because it can be problematic when you try and split the cases. It's, it can be pretty hard. So we've gone with the O-ring rubber seal. If you can see in the video, there's a groove around the outside. That will sit in, a bit hard with one hand, but you get the drift. And then the case half will close up on it. Um, one of the other features that we incorporated 
you know, just thinking through and thinking forward of, of how hard it would be, because there's obviously going to be a press fit bearing um, here, and then one here as well, how to get the case half off to check or to service them or replace bearings. And so what we've done is, if you have a look there, I'm hoping you can see that, there's a, there's a full through thread all the way through the case. So that's for a long series bolt. If you get like a hundred millimetre or four inch uh, bolt and then screw it in, it will then, there's dowels here, there's a dowel there, which line up with these two dowels here. So once that case is on, you'll be able to get your four inch or hundred millimetre bolt straight onto that. It will wind in, it'll end up hitting the case there, which is fine. And it will then, if you do it evenly with these two thread holes, there's another one here, it will then pull the case off evenly so you're not having to pry um, with a screwdriver or lever bar and wreck the case halves. So hopefully that gives you a bit more insight into the design of the case halves and um, yeah. So to answer the question about uh, which transmissions the RGBs can bolt to, um, basically it can be any transmission that they'll fit to. <laughs> I know that doesn't sound that profound, but what I'm trying to say is that it's, it can be pretty universal. The brackets here, we've just created uh, our brackets out of a, the base is a blast plate, like I mentioned in the first update. Uh, and then it's pretty straightforward and simple. So all we'd have to do for other transmissions is find different points on the transmission that the case can bolt to like this. So this is a 5EAT automatic transmission. Uh, just to show you, it can sit sort of nice and close. It's still wide, but um, it can sit nice and close in here. And we'd probably come off these bolts at the side here and then make a plate this way. And then there's some other threaded holes here. So there's the options are endless in a sense. So it all depends on the transmission, but the RGBs themselves can be fairly universal. Uh, we won't be bringing out a kit for the Fourier automatic transmission because we already have one and the portal hubs, to be honest, will be more expensive than the 4EAT uh, gear kit that we've brought out uh, purely because there's so many parts. Like there's per transmission, there's, you know, four case halves, there's eight bearings, there's four gears, there's, you know, lots of brackets. Um, one of the other things too, for the 012 uh, or 01E, or 012, 01E, most people call it, um, Audi transmission. I've asked uh, Tim, Tim Shettle from Ultimate Engineering in the UK. So hopefully we can team up and get him to uh, design the brackets for the, because we, yeah, we just don't have the time to do every single transmission. So yeah, it'd be great if we can get some help from different guys. So Tim's considering helping us, which is great. A very smart guy, um, very switched on. He's produced a lot of products for the TDI swaps over in Europe. So again, this RGB with brackets that go to the uh, 012 Audi V-Dub Passat transmission. Um, yeah, it could work as long as we get the brackets right and the offset and all of that sort of stuff, which can be worked out. But yeah, just to let you know, they can be bolted to many different transmissions. It just comes down to the brackets that would be used. Thanks guys, I'll leave it at that for now and I will see you in the next update.